What's up, comic fans? I'm Mark. A couple weeks ago, I was talking with Pops about the convoluted history of the Justice League Dark. And then just the other day, I saw somebody posted a comic book stating it was the first appearance of the Justice League Dark. And it had me thinking, this is a complicated matter that deserves diving into. So that's what this is. I'm Mark, this is the Legion of Comics, and this is the truth behind Justice League Dark. Shout out to the channel sponsors, Big Time Collectibles. Be sure to check them out at their website or on social media. And check out Justin Comics over on Instagram if you need anything clean or pressed. Let them know you found them via the channel or hit them with that promo code WEARLEGION and take advantage of the special offer he has running for the channel. All right, guys, so this is it. The Justice League Dark, it's one of my favorite teams at DC Comics. I'm a big fan of these hodgepodge teams that get thrown together like Suicide Squad, Justice League Dark, so on. It's just fun seeing those dynamics. That being said, it's also been talked about a lot in mainstream media. Well, mainstream comic book media, especially with James Gunn taking over the DCU with ramblings of a Constantine 2 with the Swamp Thing television show that got canceled early. Who knows what will come next? But it's a great opportunity to stop and actually look at this team, look at their history. We're not going to dive into the specifics of the character, but more importantly, the introduction of the team itself into the DC Comics universe. So first and foremost, I do want to point out, we're going to cut to the chase, the first official appearance of the Justice League Dark as recognized by DC Comics themselves, CGC, which is a certified grading service where you get comics encapsulated and stuff. They put the credits on those things so that you know specifically why the book is important, special, or a key comic. And that comic is none other than uh, Justice League Dark issue number one. It's right there in the title. It uh, implies it with the book itself. This is the first time the team is ever called Justice League Dark. This is from November of 2011. It was part of the first wave of comic books that came out during the New 52 era, which that's a video unto itself that's worth diving into and talking about the whole New 52 era. So this is the first official appearance of the team. That's what CGC recognizes them as, Overstreet recognizes them as, as well as DC Comics themselves. So the whole team came together under the suggestion of Madame Xanadu to uh, fight off the Enchantress. You might recognize the name. She was the big villain from the first Suicide Squad movie. She became separated from her host and things went from bad to worse. And they came together to ward her off and then they stayed together after that. But that's not the part that really has people always like questioning what is or isn't. There's four books in question today that we're going to talk about and look at the details of so that we can figure out, and this might be a little bit of opinion involved in this, which one you might consider as the first appearance of the Justice League Dark. So I definitely will be interested to know everyone's take on this. So leave me a comment down below as we go through this and let me know what you think. We're going to take these in order per their release date. So first one up is Swamp Thing Annual Number 2 from January 1985. This is an unofficial, quote unquote, appearance of the justice league dark and i'll be honest with you uh this is in no way an appearance of the justice league dark whatsoever and i'll explain to you why i feel that way or why i know that way the truth of the matter is it's no team appearance now key comics uh key collector comics there's an app out there that you can track important books and so on and so forth they recognize this as an unofficial cameo appearance of the team so what that means who knows that couldn't make less sense if they tried their hardest unofficial cameo of a team that's not even recognized so in this book you have guest appearances nothing more literally just guest appearances of other characters that fall within like the supernatural realm which swamp thing is one of those characters so in this book swamp thing sees abby which is his love interest she's laying there she's not dead but she's not alive her body's not decomposing and he recognizes that she's soulless so he goes into the green and into the supernatural realm to go find her soul and the first person he comes across is dead man he agrees to help him but then they run into the phantom stranger then he agrees to take him farther and they recognize that to go farther they need to get permission from one of like the celestial giants of the spirit world so they go and find the specter and ask for permission to go even beyond this supernatural realm to hell itself and the specter gets them there and along the way he's not gathering people he's just running into and passing by people so they never come together as a team in this he eventually gets to hell and it's etrigan who who ushers him through hell and helps him fight off hordes to get abby soul back so nowhere in this is there even a team. It's like Swamp Thing plus one throughout the whole book. They never come together. 
Etrigan never sees dead man, so on, so on, so forth kind of thing. It's just guest appearances. There's, It's not an official. It's not an unofficial. It's not a cameo. It's nothing. It's Swamp Thing with guest appearances. That's it. So this book is in no way, shape, fashion, or form Justice League Dark at all. The next book up would be Blue Devil Annual Number 1 from November of 1985. This would be the second one that's listed as a unofficial team appearance not even not even saying uh cameo on this one it's just unofficial team appearance per key collector which again couldn't be farther from the proof uh, from the truth and there's some context that has to go into this one so the story behind this one is felix faust is trying to get this magical orb the MacGuffin, if you will um it starts out with man bat scooping up the creeper and dropping him off at madame xanadu's doorstep the phantom stranger shows up wanting to take him and Phantom Stranger and Madame Xanadu kind of have a battle over who's going to help him. And that's kind of how this book goes. It's these characters running into each other throughout the book, fighting each other for the same. This, they're after the same thing. They just keep fighting each other. It's kind of a great example of falling upward. By the end of the book, they all end up crossing paths together, work together to save the day, get what they want kind of thing. And here's where the important context comes in. You have the Creeper, Blue Devil, Madame Xanadu, Phantom Stranger, Demon, Black Orchid, Man Bat all together. And the Creeper even insinuates we should start a team. And he even says a Justice League or something like that. And he names some goofy names of a team. They all look at each other. And in the context of it all, they all say in unison, that's the stupidest idea they ever heard of. And they shut it down. So no way in the context of the book do they recognize they were a team nor will they should be a team or ever will be a team. They were all just on the same battlefield fighting for the same cause in that moment. Like I mentioned, up until that moment, they never cared to even be around each other, or even operate with each other. So this, in my opinion, is close because they're all there and they all fought side by side, but it wasn't to the last minute. It just worked out that way. I mean, we've seen teams build in similar ways, but in this situation, they all reject the concept in the context of the book of this even being a team. So the book itself tells you this is not a team appearance. You know, it's just right there. The proof is in the pudding. Now, this is where you get into the ones that are probably more recognized as that. And first off, it's Swamp Thing, issue number 49 from June of 1986. This would be the third one in chronological order. Key Collector says this is an unofficial cameo of the Justice League Dark. And uh, I'll be honest with you guys, this was the penultimate issue of Alan Moore Swamp Thing run here, and they were just about to throw everything in the kitchen sink at the big finale. It is an epic list of guest appearances, and what's happening is the great darkness is on the way. The Raven has called, and all the magic users, supernatural people in the entirety of the adjacent Swamp Thing characters all see the same calling card from like this uh, crow that's letting them know that the darkness is coming. So what they did is they, like I said, they put both feet into this. They wanted every guest appearance they could possibly get people that have uh, shared, shared pages with Swamp Thing and been Swamp Thing adjacent. They wanted to bring the reader something special. So you just had a laundry list of guest appearances, good guys and bad guys from Zatara, Zatanna, the demon, Dr. Occult, Constantine, Deadman, Phantom Stranger, Baron Winter. And at the end, they even pull in Steve Dayton with his Mento helmet. And it's unfortunate what happens then, but they were all just preparing for the great darkness. These characters are not sharing pages together. Most of these people don't even know each other's involvement in this. They're spread out all over the place, all over the world. They're not even after the same thing per se. They just are all responding and reacting to this vision they have of this crow, letting them know that this great darkness, this great evil is coming to take over the world. So this is in no way, shape, fashion, or form, a team appearance, a cameo team appearance, an official and unofficial, nothing. None of those things. It's just a book with a lot of characters in it. It's that simple. And then this is a part one to the part two, which is the last one here. And this is the one that I think most people consider the first unofficial appearance of the Justice League Dark. And I was kind of on the fence on it as well. But that's Swamp Thing, issue number 50 from July of 1986. And this one is listed as the unofficial first team appearance of the Justice League Dark. Don't know how or why this is any different than the ones that came before. Maybe because a little bit of the context of the story. So you have all the characters in this one that were listed in the one before, plus Dr. Fate. Dr. Fate shows up. Now, all those characters I listed out of them, the ones you see on the cover here, Phantom Stranger, Dead Man, Fate, Spectre, Etrigan, Swamp Thing, they're all traveling down toward the darkness. They're all going to fight off the hordes to go fight off the darkness. Everyone else that I listed before are pretty much going to a seance to try to 
boost their powers while they go off and fight the darkness. So this is, again, just another example of an epic finale. They just wanted to have as many people as they could in here to help like really sell off and send off this story. But that being said, the team that's downstairs fighting off the darkness, you could consider it the Justice League Dark, I guess. They're actually working as a team. They're all working in unison for the same cause. They're all together. You know, it's it is unofficial, I guess, at that point. And it wouldn't even it wouldn't even be a Justice League Dark appearance had it not been that the actual team came later. But it's interesting, the team that came in 2011 does not necessarily reflect this team. There's only a few characters with overlap. It wasn't until that series ran for a while that more characters came and they went and found the new Swamp Thing and all that kind of stuff that it really solidified some of these characters as being on the team. But that being said, it was a, it was a fantastic issue, a great story. There was a lot of people that actually died in this one. Uh, you had Sargon die, you had Z Zatanna's father die. It was a really big, important issue. And I think because of its importance, it kind of catches some of that some of that spec heat they want this one to be the one and i wouldn't necessarily be opposed to this one it is an unofficial team appearance after all like this is the first time you really see these people band together and really work in unison like this and in this story there's even references back to that earlier swamp thing number two annual where they uh, actually met up and passed uh, each other's way while he was looking for abby but when it all comes down to it if you want to get nitty-gritty with it the first team appearance of justice league dark is and still Justice League Dark number one from 2011. That's the truth of the matter. If you want to go back and pick up those previous issues as just kind of like bonuses to have for it because you like the characters and it adds to some of the history and you can kind of see the writing on the wall, keep in mind there's like 30 years almost between these books. Or, yeah, like 30 years between the original time that they were just teaming up or guest appearing and this book actually coming to be an actual team. So when it comes down to it, which one is actually the first appearance? Justice League Dark number one. The rest are just guest appearances. They're fun to have. Key Collector likes to make a big stink of a lot of things, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. It's fun to get to know some of the history. But if you're out there looking for these books or you see somebody post first appearance of Justice it's not. That's a lie. That's just straight up a lie or they just don't know any different. They're checking an app that's not giving you context. They haven't read the story. Bottom line, first appearance of Justice League Dark is issue number one from 2011. That being said, do unofficial appearances count? Of course they do, but only if you want them to. So it is really up to the collector, the reader, to decide for yourself which one of these mean the most to you, which one do you feel is most important. For me, it's Swamp Thing issue 50. I think the story is just all there. I think it's just Alan Moore wrote it. It's just the first appearance of the great darkness itself. It just was the, the heel and dark crisis. It's just a very important comic book as a whole. To me, more important than Justice League Dark issue number one. But I would be interested to know what you think. Leave me a comment down below. Be sure to hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And consider joining the channel membership and becoming part of the Legion. And until next time, as always, I'm Mark, but we are Legion.